It finally happened. The hearing that everyone in the space world had been waiting for. Jared Isaacman for NASA Administrator. It was two hours and 45 minutes long, but I'm going to condense it for you and give you just the highlights. And at the end, I'm going to give you some ice cream. Senator Cruz, you showed up on time today, so you, too, deserve ice cream. Oh, he also deserves some ice cream because he made a poster. So my team did a visual representation of what the stakes are. And it's a simple question, what does the future look like in 2030? Now, I will note that my team used ChatGPT to make this poster. <laughs> and my immediate comment on seeing it is the American flag is too damn small. And I was told it was difficult to get a bigger American flag on AI. That may be underscoring the need to win the race for AI as well. But it does give a sense of exactly what the choices we're facing. So do we have your commitment that you will not allow the scenario on the right on this poster to happen, that China will not beat us to the moon, that one of these heroes sitting in this room will set his or her, and as a father of two daughters, I'm particularly excited that Artemis is committed, it will be a her, the first woman will step foot on the moon, and she will be an American astronaut. Do we have your commitment that that we will win the race to the moon and China will not beat us. Senator, I only see the left-hand portion of that poster. Now, that poster was how Senator Cruz, the chairman of this committee, opened up his questioning. Now, the number one question for Jared Isaacman going into this hearing was, where does he stand on this moon versus Mars debate? Does he support the current plan, Artemis, going back to the moon first and then Mars? Because that's what Cruz wants. Or does he support what President Trump and Elon Musk want, which is prioritizing Mars first? What is your view? Will you maintain course with the Artemis program so that we can return American astronauts to the moon before President Trump leaves office? First, I, I couldn't agree more with the president and his inspiring and ambitious goal to send American astronauts to plant the stars and stripes on Mars. Uh, he didn't say we shouldn't go to the moon. I, I suspect the president, as I feel, and probably a lot of Americans, is, is what's taking us so long to get back to the moon, and why does it cost so much money? I absolutely want to see us return to the moon. As I mentioned in my, my prepared remarks, determine the economic, scientific, and national security value while we are also proceeding towards Mars. I don't think we have to make any tough trades here. We don't have to make a, a binary decision of moon versus Mars, or moon has to come first versus Mars. I think we could be paralleling these efforts and doing the near impossible, which is exactly why the American uh, taxpayers funded NASA in the first place. So Isaacman's answer to the moon versus Mars debate is both. He thinks NASA can do both simultaneously. But Senator Andy Kim wanted a commitment to more than just flags and footprints. He wanted to know if Isaacman supported building a base on the moon. Are you committed to having a permanent presence on the moon? Senator, I, I think the biggest thing is we need to get back there. Uh, it's been taking a very long time, and the American taxpayers have invested an awful lot. I agree lot. with you on that front. Yeah. I, I think we can take that for, for granted between me and you. But I, I guess I want to get a sense, because you know the chairman laid this out, actually, and the, and the poster that he had wasn't just about getting back to the moon, but it was about sustaining a presence on the moon. And I, I just feel like I don't have a good understanding of what your actual position is right now on that. Well, I, I think, Senator, the, again, the first step to me is, is to return to the moon and determine its, its economic, its scientific, and its national security value for yeah, I, I, remaining I, there. I saw that in your, in your statement, and I, I guess, I, again, I was confused because in, in your response to the chairman, you were talking about how you know, helium-3, this is something that could very well shift the balance of power uh, within the, uh, you know, here on Earth. What else are you looking at? Like, what, what else is in your mind right now beyond helium-3 and the impacts there when you're talking about scientific, economic, and national security? Well, Senator, that's what, I mean, that's what we need to get there to find out. You know, all, all the best science fiction movies out there have something like helium-3 as the economic justification for an enduring presence, not just sure. on the moon, but for out, throughout, you know, uh, space exploration. So I, I guess, you know, kind of as we've been talking about this, you know, moon, Mars, two priorities, you were much more definitive about saying we need to get to Mars. So I guess I just want to ask you that same question. What are the scientific, economic, and national security priorities that you see more clearly when it comes to going to Mars right now than in terms of having a permanent presence on the moon? 
Well, I, Senator, to be clear, I, I certainly hope in the future that we have lots of space stations, a, a full lunar outpost, a Mars outpost, and we're pushing even beyond that. I'm just saying we need to get back to the moon. We need to figure out why we need to be there, and I certainly hope why there is a reason. Why do we need to be, uh, like, uh, what, I'm getting, what I'm trying to get a sense of, you seem much more definitive about saying we need to get to Mars and putting resources towards that effort. What are the specific economic, scientific, and national security interests you see there because I, I get a sense that you have some greater clarity there than you do when it comes to the moon. Well, I, I would actually hope you're getting a, a, a sincere answer from me that we should be doing both and the other things. I know a few of my colleagues already today have tried to get a specific answer out of you, but you have avoided directly answering them today. Uh, so I ask again, um, Mr. Isaacman, do you support maintaining NASA long-term mission to maintaining, uh, maintaining NASA's long-term mission to maintain a human activity on the moon? Senator, I, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm not sounding clear on this, I think it's imperative that we do both. I think that's what NASA was created to do. I, I would love nothing more than to see this crew get around the moon for us to land on the moon, figure out its scientific, economic, national security value, while we we're also charting a course in line with President Trump's vision for American astronauts to plant the stars and stripes on Mars. So you think we can do both simultaneously? I, I mean, we do multiple flagship scientific missions at, at NASA. We maintain a presence in, in LEO where we're undertaking dozens of scientific experiments at once. I think we can, ma'am. So I want to ask you again, because you've said you'll follow the law, are you committed to a sustained human presence in cislunar space or, or on the moon? And that is federal statute. Senator, if that is the law, then I'm committed to it. So with that commitment, the question then becomes, how does Isaacman envision getting NASA astronauts back on the moon? Does he support the current plan, the wildly expensive SLS rocket and possibly dangerous Orion spacecraft? Or does he support canceling those programs and going with a commercial option that's less expensive but likely to take longer? Do you believe that the current Artemis architecture fe featuring SLS rocket or Orion spacecraft is the best and fastest way to beat China to the moon. Senator, this is the current plan. I do believe it's the, be the best and fastest way to get there. Uh, I don't think it's uh, the long-term way to get to and from the moon and to Mars with great frequency, but this is the plan we have now, and we've got to get this crew around the moon and the follow-on crew to land on the moon. And oh yeah, the crew that he's talking about is the crew of Artemis II, and they were sitting right behind him in the front row. It's pretty rare for NASA to bring out their top astronauts for any hearing, but especially a political hearing. Next topic, the International Space Station. The International Space Station is managed at a Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. NASA is planning to retire the ISS by 2030, replacing it with one or more commercially developed space stations funded partially by NASA and partially by outside customers. Unfortunately, both NASA and commercial replacements are behind schedule. Do you agree that we cannot have a gap period between the ISS and its successor when there would be zero human U.S. presence in low Earth orbit? I do agree, Senator. We cannot cede low Earth orbit to the Chinese. Now, I would note in the first Trump administration, there were those in the administration pushing to deorbit the International Space Station prematurely. Given that we've invested over $100 billion in the station, I think that would be profoundly foolish to give up on that investment as long as it is safe to continue using it. After the administration floated this idea multiple times, the United States Senate passed legislation that I authored, 100 to nothing, Every Republican and every senator came through committing that we would maintain the International Space Station at least until 2030 as long as, as it is safe and scientifically feasible. Will you commit to follow the law and not deorbit the space station before 2030? Senator, I will absolutely commit to follow the law, and I think we need to maximize the return that taxpayers have invested in that, in that orbital laboratory, use every bit of time we have to crack the code on the space economy, and give commercial LEO destinations a fighting chance when they inevitably take over, sir. Now, the reason Cruz hit that question so hard is because a few weeks ago, Elon Musk said that he thought the space station should be retired in 2027, three years earlier than the current plan. And that brings me to our next topic. Elon Musk, and a warning that this is probably the squirmiest part of today's hearing. Mr. Isaacman, uh, you have deep personal and financial ties to Elon Musk. 
You have invested tens of millions of dollars in SpaceX. You have paid millions of dollars to SpaceX for two private space flights. Your payments company, Shift4, has an ongoing, quote, global strategic partnership with Starlink worth millions each year. And according to a recent Wall Street Journal report, must personally ask you to lead NASA. Given SpaceX's significant interest before NASA, you can understand why the public would be concerned about conflicts of interest here. So let's try to set a few things straight. I understand that you met with Elon Musk at Mar-a-Lago in late 2024. Is that correct? Uh, no, Senator. I was in Mar-a-Lago uh, to be interviewed by the President of the United States. So you did not meet with Elon Musk in, um, at Mar-a-Lago? I, my, I went to Mar-a-Lago for, to be interviewed by the President of the United no, States. I, I didn't ask you that. I, did you meet with Elon Musk at Mar-a-Lago? I believe he was one of dozens of people that were around Mar-a-Lago at the time, Senator. So, so did you meet with him? I, I would not say we had a meeting. Uh, we, we probably had a conversation in passing, Senator. Okay, during that same trip, then President-elect Trump offered you the NASA administrator job. Is that correct? Uh, at the conclusion of the meeting, uh, Senator, he did. Thank you. When Elon Musk, was Elon Musk in your meeting when Trump offered you the NASA position at Mar-a-Lago? Uh, Senator, I was interviewed by the, the President of the United States. Was Elon Musk in the meeting when he offered you the job? Uh, Senator, my meeting was with the President of the United so States. So Elon Musk was not in the meeting, is that what you're saying? I, Senator, I, I, I was being interviewed and speaking with the President of the United States. You can just say he was not in the meeting. Was he I, in the meeting or not in the meeting? I Senator, I'm trying to be as, as transparent as I can. I was being interviewed by the President of the United States. It's not a difficult question. Was Elon Musk in the room when the President offered you the job? Senator, I was, again, I, my meeting was with the President of the United States. I, 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 I'm assuming that you don't want to answer the um, question uh, directly because Elon Musk was in the room. I think that's the only conclusion anyone listening to this could, uh, could, uh, could reach. Um, unless you wanted to dispel us of that notion. Uh, Senator, again, I was being interviewed by the President of the United States, and I'd also say I have no... Uh, well, that's not... I, 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 I'm, I appreciate that. I, I, I'm just trying to determine Elon Musk's role in this, and you're not uh, willing to be fully transparent. Um, have you discussed your plans for NASA with Elon Musk? I have not. What steps will you take, uh, if confirmed to ensure that he has not allowed uh, undue influence, given the extensive contracts that he has uh, with NASA, uh, uh, to make sure that he has uh, un no undue influence over the awarding or the implementation of those contracts? Well, I, th I think, Senator, I, I absolutely want to be clear. My loyalty is to this nation, the space agency, and, and their world-changing mission. I, I have to imagine that in uh, the 1960s, Administrator Webb would have taken phone calls and welcomed the input from all the various contractors that were contributing to the endeavor. But they're the contractors. NASA is the customer. They work for us, not the other way around, Senator. And finally, the moment that you've been waiting for. Uh, the classic Twilight Zone episode that ends with, it's a cookbook! It's a cookbook! Not that one. But that was a moment. But this one. And to each of you, all the children deserve ice cream. They've been awesome today. <laughs> Thank you, Senator. I would ask Senator Blackburn, is the ice cream limited to the children? Senator Cruz, you showed up on time today, so you, too, deserve ice cream. <laughs> I will be certain that at lunch I serve you ice cream. I, I, I will take it. So, bottom line... I don't see any reason why Isaacman won't be confirmed after what I think was a really strong performance. He has broad bipartisan support. And don't forget his bio. I mean, how many people can say this? I'm also an astronaut. I'm also an astronaut. Like, it's the third thing down on his resume. So I think that Jared Isaacman is going to be the next administrator of NASA. And I think that salted caramel ice cream is the best flavor of ice cream.